we turn now to So Ong, the Burmese uh, dissident activist uh, who was involved in the 1988 uh, people uprise, People's Uprising in Burma and has remained active outside of his country now for 20 years uh, on behalf of uh, freedom in Burma. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I think uh, it's good afternoon now, actually. Uh, before I talk about uh, my personal story about the life of the dissident, uh, I've been in uh, exile uh, out of Burma for 20 years. Now I'm residing in Thailand. I would like to um, remind you uh, a little bit about the, uh, uh, my country, uh, Burma, uh, where there is the only living uh, Nobel Peace Laureate, uh, Dong San Suu Kyi, as my uh, Cuban uh, fellow dissident uh, mentioned about. She's under detention. Uh, for 13 years out of the past uh, 18 years. And um, when we talk about Burma, we can't uh, ignore uh, about the numbers. We have uh, at least uh, half a million uh, in displaced people in the eastern part of Burma because of the uh, ongoing uh, military operations in our country. And uh, uh, in the Burma uh, Armed Forces, there are uh, 400,000, and uh, at least almost 20% of them are child soldiers, the highest in the world. And uh, we have uh, every one out of three uh, children are malnourished, uh, where the military spending of the defense budget is uh, much higher than uh, combined health and uh, education. It is the only country in the region which spent at the defense budget more than the health and uh, uh, education combined bu budget. We have uh, infant uh, mortality rate and uh, under uh, age of five mortality rate, uh, second highest in Asia uh, after uh, Afghanistan. Uh, we have uh, many more numbers uh, that uh, I could mention about uh, uh, later. But uh, I was involved in the uh, uh, student-led uh, uprising in uh, 1988, where uh, the successive uh, military regimes uh, in, the, in Burma, uh, when they took power uh, since 1962, and then uh, in 88, the uh, people are so much fed up with the, uh, uh, due to the uh, mismanagement uh, of the economy and uh, suppressions in the country, and uh, the millions of people took to the street, and I joined as uh, one of the uh, student uh, uh, organizers uh, of the uh, uprising and uh, protests and demonstrations. And the regime uh, responded to the uh, peaceful demonstrations of the people around the country with the uh, bullets. And as many as three to 8,000 people died in the streets in the due course of uh, uh, eight months. And uh, what made me uh, decided to become a dissident uh, when I left uh, my country because I've seen uh, people, my fellow uh, demonstrators, activists, die uh, in the street. And uh, I thought that uh, if I could continue to uh, defy uh, against them uh, in the country, then uh, I would also be uh, one of my fellow activists uh, who died or languished in uh, prisons. So I left... Uh, my country and I spent about um, uh, almost three years in the jungle and uh, where I have faced my fellow colleagues uh, died because of uh, diseases, you know, malaria, uh, in actions, fighting against the uh, military soldiers. I myself, uh, I have to tell you this story, I have to uh, across the minefield with the uh, ethnic minority troops who are helping us, you know, to, to, uh, out our struggle. And uh, the ethnic group which uh, are following, uh, accompanying rather, uh, my uh, people, my fellow students, they don't know where those uh, landmines are laid because uh, those were laid uh, by the uh, other different uh, factions uh, against them. So I, I was thinking that uh, this is the moment of my life. If my, I could make it across this landmine field, then uh, I could make it through anything, you know, in the future struggle of mine. And uh, 
I made it, and uh, here I am, still uh, alive and uh, working for the course. Uh, this, however, uh, I missed uh, many meals, you know, like uh, during the course of, of the uh, struggle uh, in the jungle, but these, all these uh, sufferings are nothing, you know, which compared to my fellow activists uh, who are still working, struggling, uh, defying against the military junta inside the country. There are more than 2,100 political prisoners still languishing inside the country, the prisons inside my country. The National League for Democracy, who is the, uh, the main opposition party, which is led by the uh, Dong San Suu Kyi, many of their leaders, members, are still languishing in the prisons. In my country, I have to tell you that uh, there are people, uh, students, activists, the bloggers, you know, the people who helped the victims of the uh, Cyclone Nagis, which struck Burma last year, and uh, as many as 140,000 people died, as much as 2.5 million people been displaced. They, the people who helped those victims of the cyclone are also put in prisons because of their work to help the people. And the military regime never recognized the uh, result of the elections, which they held in 1990, where the uh, opposition party and the ethnic groups won 80% of the votes, 80% of the votes. But this result of the election was never been acknowledged and that, that parliament has never been uh, convened in my country. So what is it to do with my uh, dissident life with these activities? Because we, uh, as a coalition uh, of the uh, youth and student and former political prisoners, women, uh, migrant workers, we are working to empower the, uh, our fellow activists, especially inside the country, that uh, the rights of the people cannot be ignored. The rights of the people, the students, the migrant workers cannot be uh, overpowered by the, uh, the military, you know, the, those who have power only with their guns. Without their guns, they're nothing. So we provide uh, capacity building trainings, you know, empower them like uh, for a student that, uh, that to uh, reduce the uh, bus fare, you know, like uh, to go to their schools is their own right. Because in our country, the people cannot uh, do anything. When we talk about the university, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, you know, like almost all of the articles are not allowed for my country. In, in, it's called Burma. And uh, so the, um, what are the key issues that uh, we are focusing now? It's like, the most uh, prior issues that we are focusing now is the release of the political prisoners. Be without this process, we cannot achieve any national reconciliation in our country. We cannot have any dialogue with the military regime, which continue to oppress their own people. And the, the, in next year, uh, the, there'll be uh, elections, which is going to base on the regime unilateral uh, adopted, unilaterally adopted uh, constitution, which is without the consent of the people, which the people try to vote against the referendum. So, and also that the regime efforts to delay the uh, international assistance when the cyclone Nagis hit the country, they purposely delayed the international community effort, which may also define as uh, the crime against humanity and the continued, the regime ongoing military operations in the eastern part of Burma can also design as a war crimes. So we are working on these issues and one of the priorities. And uh, one of the most important thing I would like to draw your attention here is that um, in a few days, uh, 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 in the end of this uh, month, in April, there'll be a European Union common position uh, on Burma will be adopted. 